have a question. Why yes, does it please. say this is being recorded? I just put, put clicked it on. To see, I've never done it before. I just want to see how it comes out. Oh, all right. Is that like I I don't care. I can shut it off. I'm just curious. Hmm. All right. Has anyone in here ever heard Mr. any of Mr. Marshall's poetry? He's so great at writing really powerful poetry. He's really gifted. Um, I was talking to Mr. Marshall about lots of things this morning, poetry. And um, I said, oh yeah, I love poetry. That's probably where my love of music comes from because song lyrics are just poems that's, that's all they are you know to music yeah i just put the record on just to see if i can record a class to just to see how it comes out i'm just curious uh i can shut it off i do, i so don't care it's like not a big deal but, but I, don't, I don't see like what the big Who can tell me what this poem slash song is about?
rocking song. What's that, Nooch? It's a rocking song. Okay, yeah, I am what is known back in the 80s as a headbanger. I like uh, like heavy metal music. I like all kinds of music. It's rock and roll. I, I like every, all of it, but I do like heavy metal, yeah. Sharp. Is there any particular reason why this meeting is being recorded? No reason at all. I just wanted to try it and see how it came out. I can shut it off. It's a problem for people. I don't know what the big deal is. It's, I totally had no problem shutting it off. I just wanted to try it. I never tried it before. Let me ask you this, does this master seem like a good thing? No, doesn't. Doesn't seem too great, no. Blinded my, by me, you can't see a thing. Just call my name, I'll hear your scream. My brother's calling. Your life burns faster. <clears throat> How I'm killing you. My brother's calling. Yes, Oliver. Um, it said that we were being recorded. Yeah, I just said that. I just turned it on. I just wanted to see if it, how it works, if it records it and how it comes out. I so don't care. If people want me to shut it off, I absolutely can. I it, I don't see what the thing is. Thanks, I just want to know. Yeah. What's that? I just uh, wanted to know. Yeah, no worries, Pam, no worries. Uh, last chance, and thoughts on this? This poem, what this poem is about? Someone got it in the last class. Not to put any pressure on this class. Yeah, Nooch? Is it like, kind of like someone like controlling someone? Because it says Master of Puppets by Metallica. So like, uh, probably someone like, kind of like in the old days when they were like slaves. Okay, that is great. It is about controlling people, uh, but it's not about a person controlling people. It's about drugs, how drugs control people. You know, it's saying, just try me, taste me, you'll see, more is all you'll need. And, I'm, you know, the drug is dedicated to, you know, killing you. Um, you know, I'm the master of puppets. I'm pulling your strings. I twist your mind and I crush your dreams. I smash your dreams. Yeah, so it's a, it's a powerful message, you know, and it's, again, it's a, just a song, of course, but, uh, great. Anyway, Mr. Sharp, what does this have to do with science class? Well, I just want to talk a little bit about sound. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about sound. We've, I'm going to stop sharing. It's definitely come up in our conversations, sound energy, how some forms of energy get converted to sound energy. But I don't think we've actually like officially got it down in our notes as a form of energy, which I want to do right now. Um, so yeah, I want to I want to make sure we include sound energy. Uh, do you think sound is a form of potential energy or kinetic energy? Kinetic energy? Yeah, sound moves. It moves at the speed of sound, which is about 750 miles per hour if you're a stupid American. Uh, sound energy is, uh, yeah, it's a kinetic energy. Uh, sound waves, which are vibrations. All 
unlike electromagnetic waves, sound waves need, need matter to move through, like an ocean wave. They need matter. Electromagnetic waves don't. They can travel through the vacuum of space and do. Uh, you know, they travel 150 million kilometers from the sun to the earth all the time, constantly. Um, and when I say a medium, what I'm referring to is solids, liquids, or gases, or a combination of more than one. Uh, the kinetic energy of sound waves moving through a medium, solids, liquids, or gases. Great. Does anyone want to take a guess as to which of these mediums they think sound waves propagate, move through best? Nooch? Uh, solid, because solid is like all the molecules are more densely packed, so the sound can bounce off of the uh, 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 atoms better. Someone in the last class said almost the same exact thing, which makes me think that you may have heard this before. Is that true, or did you pick this up somewhere else? I'm just curious if Ms. Topskis went over any of this. I'm just, I'm just thinking like that it, like it, it sounds correct. Yeah, that's great. You're absolutely right. Sound waves travel much better through solids than they do through gases, and you can prove it to yourself in two seconds. You can, you know, create a vibration on a solid a desk or a wall or a window or whatever. You can hear it travel through the air to your, to, through the, the gases to your air. Or you can put your air right on the, you know, on the medium and try it again. And uh, trust me, you're gonna hear, I can't do that, Mr. Sharp, I'm too lazy. But if you do, you'll hear that uh, it's much, much louder traveling directly through the solid to your air than it is traveling through the gas in the room, the air in the room. Bajoli, can you confirm that for me? Confirm or deny that myth? Oh, uh, yeah, I just did it on my desk twice. It's much louder. Am I telling lies or is that true? No, it's true. Okay, thank you so much for confirming that. We know now that Mr. Sharp is not fibbing. That is so great for us. Um, yeah. Yeah, so sound waves. If I was to maybe look at what a sound wave might look like, let's see. I have to share my screen. Here is a speaker. Um, and it's not doing anything right now. It's not converting electricity to sound, but let's have it do that. Let's actually hear what it sounds like. That's so annoying, Mr. Sharp. Can you shut that off? Yes, I can. Um, so we see two things kind of over on the top here. We see the frequency and amplitude. The frequency refers to the we talked about this with electromagnetic waves. So any waves we can measure the frequency and amplitude of. Sound waves, the same, and we can change the frequency. There is a very high frequency. I'll turn it down to a lower frequency. And back up to a higher frequency. And what does that sound like? That's catchy, Mr. Sharp. It's okay. It's okay. Does anyone know what the amplitude refers to? Yeah, no. Anybody? Yeah, go ahead, Jake. How far the crest is from the um, equilibrium? I think. Yeah, it's not the frequency, which is the same as the same as the wavelength. It's the loudness. It's the loudness. It's how much energy that particular frequency has. Um, so it's the loudness. Um, if I turn the amplitude all the way down, you get nothing. Uh, there's no energy in that wave, and there's no wave. If I turn the amplitude a little higher, The 
amplitude doesn't change the frequency. It doesn't change the tone, the type of sound. It only changes the loudness. Please stop that, Mr. Sharp. Okay, I will calm down. Um, you know, uh, another kind of way to think about it too, like, Sound waves are what they called, uh, what, what's called uh, compression waves um, or longitudinal waves. Uh, they're a little different than another wave called the transverse wave. Um, it's very much like a slinky, but what you have is um, something that's changing the density of the air because it's moving. It's moving. Like if I were to put this on again, like, that's a speaker, right? That's a kind of a picture of a speaker. Like one of these stupid things that's in your phone, in your TVs, your stereos that, you know, you play Minecraft through and whatever. What part of this vibrates the air? What part of this makes the air change density? How about someone besides Newt? He's doing great today. Anybody else want to do a good job? What part of this changes the, or look at the animation on my screen. What part of the speaker is really doing the work? The, the dented area or the like. The very front area. Like, the yeah. subwoofer, is not a subwoofer. Uh, what, what color of, what part of the speaker, what color is it? The yellow uh, part. Yeah, the, the yellow, yellow part, the yellow part. Um, that's called a diaphragm. Uh, they call them some other things too, but. Diaphragm, yeah, the diaphragm of the speaker moves back and forth and it changes the density of the air and it does it really fast and in dynamic ways. And uh, it, can, it, can, it can produce many different frequency sounds, not obviously at the same time, but almost so fast that Actually, depending on if you have more than one speaker, you know, these can all do different frequencies at different times and do it really fast. And they can create sounds that are very dynamic that aren't like this, but are, you know, like this. Very dynamic, Mr. Sharp. I know it really is. Um, and you know, like these kind of like cool lines that you see uh, when like something's playing, like that on a. Really, the, the this is just someone talking. That I had, you know, um, not that we could live forever, but. Those lines actually show you something, you know. It's not graphed here, the, you know, the X and Y axis are not graphed, but it's showing you different frequencies and their amplitude on the Y axis. Um, different frequencies on the X and different amplitudes on the Y. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very dynamic stuff going on here. But I found it just in incredibly tragic that we would be given or you would that's really cool mr sharp i think it is um so the speed of sound if you're a dumb american is about 750 miles per hour um the speed of light just to give you a comparison is about 200,000 miles per second it is not even in the same ballpark as the speed of sound. The speed of sound is like a snail compared to the speed of light, you know, uh, a, a bullet or whatever, you know, you, 
Yeah, hi, Michaela. I have a question. It was about the when they was when they were talking. It seemed like um the like the frequency, well, the frequency and the amplitude. It was kind of like fading more than just like actually like completely going away. Like it faded into like um lower or lower and then it got higher again is it possible that it does not have to like slowly go down it can just completely like stop without that happening um that's such a great observation that's so awesome i love that so much um i the answer is i really don't know i'm just you know thinking and thinking out loud like for when sound gets to your eardrum which your eardrum is the same thing as this um your eardrum is a piece of skin that moves back and forth and then converts, you know, um, that back and forth motion into what your brain interprets as sound. Um, would the sound always start off lower and then get louder? I, I'm not sure. I think it's a great question. Uh, when I talk about this breaking the sound barrier, that might help a little bit, which I'm going to do in a second. Um, I don't know. I don't, and I don't know that this animation is 100% accurate. I don't know exactly exactly what's going on here i know it's showing amplitude and frequency changes. and then have this this horrible burden of the knowledge that yeah like why it rises and drops like that that's a great question i don't know exactly again all i really know is it's showing frequency and amplitude changes but um that's a great question um let's look at this horrible So when, a, when these fireworks go off and they convert their chemical potential energy into electromagnetic radiation, light, and sound waves, the light travels way faster, way faster. Let's see if we can see that in this, uh, and I don't know how this comes out over the internet, but let's see if we can notice that. These things are propagating two types of waves, electromagnetic waves in the visible spectrum and sound waves. But the electromagnetic waves get to your eyes way before, depending on how far away you are, way before the sound waves do, or before. Again, it depends how far you are. I don't know if you've ever like, kind of heard the analogy like lightning and thunder. They're the same exact event. But we use the word lightning to describe the electromagnetic waves. And we use the word thunder to describe the, the, the sound waves, but it's the same exact thing. Now the sound waves get to your ear later than the light because they're traveling slower, much slower. And uh, you know, you see the lightning before you hear the thunder, but it's the same exact thing. Um, you know, my, my, my father, I remember told me like, yeah, when you see the lightning count, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and depending on how many seconds there is in between, because if you know the speed of both of those things, which we do, and you know the time it takes for the different waves to arrive at you, you can math out how far away the event occurred. You know, so if, if, the, light, if the thunder happens five seconds after the lightning, maybe, the, maybe that happened about five miles away from me. Now, if you see it and hear it at the same time, now watch out, because it's right near you, it's right above you, it's, it's close, er. So yeah, there's a lot of information to be gained from these differences in these waves, these sound waves and these electromagnetic waves. Who has questions about any of that before we go forward? Uh, I have a question. Yes. How do I create sound waves? That is a great question. That is a great question. How do human beings create sound waves? The stupid sound waves that you're listening to from me right now.
I, am I boring you? Is that, that hurts my feelings. <laughs> How does a human being create sound? <laughs> Do I have a speaker shoved up my butt? No. I hope not. Vocal cords. What? Like vocal cords. Yeah, what are the, how do those work? What do those look like? What do those do? They create like vibrations. Yeah, they like vibrate and then the air vibrates. It makes sound. All right, let's, let's take a look at some vocal cords. That's, uh -huh. yeah, you, yeah, a human being has a diaphragm made of skin in their throat. Um, yeah, we call them vocal cords, but they also call it a diaphragm as well. But take a look at uh, the talented goat of on Steven Tyler, Aerosmith's lead singer. True story, I had a dream about Steven Tyler. And you get a feel for why he and that millions box. of others are wreaking havoc on a delicate instrument. Okay. To produce these kinds of sounds, Tyler's vocal cords are slamming together an average of 170 times a second. So that is what all of us have in our throats. And what's amazing about it is that it only can produce sound when it's open, which it is in this kind of... That's more... So right there, it's creating sound. When it's open though, it's just to allow air to pass through so that we can breathe for cellular respiration. And it, and it comes together and creates a speaker and then creates an airway and a speaker and an airway so fast. And it's able to produce a dynamic range of frequencies from low to high and different amplitudes if I whisper. Or if I'm doing my usual thing, screaming like a lunatic. It's a really amazing piece of bi, you know, biological machinery. Yeah, Marco? Why do we get voice cracks? I have no idea. I have no idea. I can tell you what I do know is like when you breathe in helium, let's say, the reason your voice sounds different is because the density of that gas is different than the density of, you know, nitrogen and oxygen that we, and carbon dioxide and water vapor. Um, but yeah, that's such an amazing machine that, most organisms don't have the range that human beings do. More than half a million times during the course of a concert. And nearly a billion times during the course of his 30 year professional career. insight into what goes on in a high high performance singer real-time measures of a, a performer who is at the top of his game just ask Steven Tyler of Aerosmith someone whose life's work depends on his vocal cords doctors I tell us one time for my kids what are you what are you what is this monitoring uh, what we're going to be doing is looking at the vibrations on the skin of your neck, which mm -hmm. is going to pick up the intensity of your voice. Mm -hmm. It's going to be picking up the loudness of your voice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Into the abyss. Um, Into the great... Few of us think about the trauma we generate in our voice boxes when we talk, sing, laugh, or scream. Tonight, as Aerosmith performs, Dr. Steven Zytels and his team from Massachusetts General. Uh, yeah, so this goes on. You can watch longer versions of this. It's very cool, though. Um, it's sad that we're not in school, because if we were, I would, at this part of the, you know, at, during this lesson, I would take you outside to my car, because my car has really great diaphragms in it. And... Uh, it can produce sound waves that are big and at very high amplitude. And of course, in a dynamic range of frequencies, you can feel my sound waves hitting your chest and hitting your body. Um, the car vibrates and you'll vibrate in it. So if you remind me next year to show you what good speakers can do with enough energy shoved into them, I will take you outside and show you that, unless, or, or the end of this year. 
So remind me of that. And I will have to, if you ask any of the other seventh or eighth graders, they've been in my car and heard my stereo. No, are we going to drive around the block, Mr. Shack? No, we're not going anywhere. We're just going to sit in the car and listen to the radio for a couple of minutes. Um, okay, so that's how human beings create a very dynamic range of frequencies and amplitudes, which allows us to communicate verbally in very dynamic ways. And that's so great for us. You know, um, do other animals have some of that similar machinery? Uh, I can think of one that does. Can anyone think of an animal that has similar machinery that can produce similar frequencies? And parrot. Thank you so much. A stupid parrot, the stupidest of all animals. But yeah, it has a nice, uh, you know, uh, vocal cord system that can mimic the frequencies made by human beings, as evidenced by the fact that it can repeat stupid human sayings. You know, dogs, cats, they just don't. You know, are there, are there dogs that probably understand like that you're trying to have them repeat what, you know, what you're saying? Yeah, they probably get it. And they're probably super aggravated. Cause they're like, yeah, I know you want me to say, you know, uh, he, whatever the stupid, somebody wants some the stupid dog. What does a person want a dog to say? I don't know, but whatever you're trying to make the dog say, the pro dog probably understands that that's what you're, you know what you're looking for and it just it can't do it just give me the treat will you i don't have the vocal cords to do that idiots here is a cool video that can show some sound waves and uh if you take it although i'm not screen sharing I'll show you this whole video, it's really great, but here's the sound wave produced by the, you know, explosion of the, the fuel, the gunpowder or whatever. And here are some sound waves being created by the bullet. That's great. So these triangular lines here, these are sound waves created by the bullet. And this is kind of the sound wave created by the explosion of the gunpowder. I'm going to show you the sound of a clap. And I don't mean some digital depiction of a clap. I mean that when this man's hands come together, you're going to see something that is normally invisible. You're going to see the actual sound wave leaving his hands and traveling outward at 761 miles per hour, the speed of sound. And here it is again. How is this possible? Well, I'll start the explanation not with sound, but with the... Now they're going to explain how this camera works to kind of get these images, which I totally don't fully understand it. I really don't understand much of it at all, but. Heat from a lighter. There's a puff of butane, sparks fly, and the fuel ignites. But that shape billowing up from the flame isn't smoke. That's normal air that has been expanded by heat. We're able to see the density change thanks to a technique called Schlieren flow visualization. Here's how it works. You start off with a light shining through a single slit. If you reflect that light off a parabolic mirror, all the rays become parallel, and then you can use another parabolic mirror to refocus the light down to a single focal point, and then in through the lens of a camera to make a picture. Now here's the trick. You place some sort of barrier right at the focal point. Now you add something that will distort the air, like a candle. The candle will block light rays, making a silhouette, and the flame will make light. The rising heat will change the density of the air above the lighter, and that will bend the light rays. The bent light ray won't pass through the focal point. It will be blocked by the barrier, and the picture will be darker. If you understood all that, call me later, and please explain it to me. This technique can be used to see anything that distorts the air. The heat from a hair straightener, for example. Even the heat coming off a human hand. Epidemiologists use it to study sneezes and coughs. Engineers use it to study aerodynamic flow. That's the Millennium Falcon, Mr. Sharp. Sound, well, I know. that's just another change in air density, a traveling compression wave. So Schlieren visualization, along with a high-speed camera, can be used to see it as well. Here's a book landing on a table. That's so great. The end of a towel being snapped. A fire high-speed camera can be used to see it as well. Here's a book landing on a table. The end of a towel being snapped. 
a firecracker. Awesome. An AK-47. An AK-47. What do you notice about the sound waves being produced by the bullet? Are they moving? They're moving, but the bullet's moving faster. All right, thank you so much. The bullet has gone supersonic. The bullet is traveling faster than the speed of sound. If you hear a bullet whiz by, or if you hear a bullet, it's gone by you. You're safe. Seven. Wait, I have a question. What's this called if you go faster than the speed of light? Because if you go faster, faster than the speed of sound, it's called supersonic. Then what's this called going faster than the speed of light? There is no name for it because you can't go faster than the speed of light. Not that I know of. Nothing travels faster than the speed of light. The speed of light is the universal maximum speed that the creator allows. Of course, as far as we know, a clap. That's a really cool video. I've never seen that before today. Just goofing around, looking for stuff. That one's not as good. We saw that already. Uh, that I'm going to watch later. Um, all right, so let's just talk about something cool really quick, and then I'll leave it alone for today. Let's talk about this. What do you notice about the frequency as the bike approaches, as the motorcycle approaches the person there, and then the frequency as the bike moves away from the person standing there? It increases, then decreases. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The sound waves as the motorcycle approaches sound higher than when the motorcycle is moving away from you. They sound lower. Why might that be? Is the motorcycle producing the same sound the whole time? Of course it is, yes. So why would a motorcycle approaching sound different than leaving? Yeah, Michaela? Well, I mean, I might be wrong, but it, it's farther away from you. So that, that's like what I was thinking. It's farther away from you, so it's, so it's going to sound different than it was when it's like right next to you. Uh, I Thank you I so much. That, yeah, Nooch? Uh, I think that it's because when the bike is really close to you, like, the sound waves go into your ear and vibrate like your eardrum really fast. But since it's farther away, like what Michaela said, the vibrations aren't as strong and they can't really, they don't hit your eardrum. I don't know, though. It, it's, it can't be just about distance because, again, if a person standing here at, you know, 10 meters and a person standing here is at, you know, the same distance, 10 meters. The person here hears this, and the person here, sorry, idiot! I shouldn't do it this way. Uh, banana head, banana head! Let me just draw it a different way. You don't have to get this down, but I'm just trying to like visualize what Nuch is saying, but if the person's here, And here comes the motorcycle. I'm, I'm not going to go crazy with these drawings. Uh, you know, and it's 10 meters away. And then the motorcycle gets here. And it's, you know, again, 10 meters away. The distance is still 10 meters on either side, but the frequency here sounds like this. And the frequency here sounds like this. 
So it can't be the distance. Probably the way you're facing then. It sounds different depending on whether you're in the front or from the back. What if I turn around if I'm standing this way as the motorcycle comes or if I'm standing this way? No, I mean like when it's coming towards you, it's probably the noise the motorcycle is making is probably going to sound different from the front of the motorcycle than from the back of the motorcycle. Because there's only like one direction that the motorcycle is going in. I agree with that 100%. The only thing that matters is, is it moving toward you or is it moving away from you? This is, co this is called, uh, you know, you could study sound for, you know, you could get a doctor in you know, acoustics or whatever. Uh, it's so, such an interesting, fascinating thing. And again, I'm just like giving you a five second crash course in it. But um, it's called the Doppler effect, you know. And that's why, like, you hear a police car or whatever or something, a motorcycle drive by, it sounds higher frequency moving toward you and lower moving away. You know, it sounds like this. Mr. Sharp, can you do that again? Yes, I can. Ready for it? And it's called the Doppler effect, and it's because the moving object, um, let's see. Uh, I thought I had some Doppler effect stuff pulled up. Here it is here. Here is an object producing sound waves. I'm not, no, I am screen sharing. But you can see that the sound waves that you know, appear at a, or seem to be at a higher frequency in front of it for the, you know, person that it's moving towards. And the sound waves, you know, um, behind it for someone standing as the object is moving away appear at, a, you know, they don't appear, they are at a lower frequency relative to them, relative to them. So yeah, right here. It's called the Doppler effect. Um, sometimes things can actually, like the bullet, move faster than the sound waves, like these things. Yeah, baby! Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the Super Hornet High Speed Pass. You know, people say the sonic boom. There is no sonic boom, really. All that really happens is that the sound from the airplane, because airplanes make a lot of sounds, these jets make a lot of sound, the sound gets to you all at once. You don't hear it, you know, increasing in amplitude because it's further away and some of the energy gets converted to heat. Um, you, the sound gets to you all at once. Um, you know, something that's traveling faster than the speed of sound Whoops. Whoops. I have a question. Please ask a question. I would love to hear a question. Um, why do we get ringing in our ears? I have no I idea. I have no clue. Um, I would love to find out. I feel like it would probably have something to do, like the same idea on how if you um, look at a bright a bright thing for a while it basically like it's it I think it like stains your retina and the that sense of when you look away you can still see it it probably has something to do it probably is something like that where if you are hearing a loud noise for a while after you can still hear it ringing in your ears because it's something you've been hearing for a while that's very possible I honestly full disclaimer have no idea why your ears are um, if you just look at this image uh, kind of here, we can see an object that's stationary in the top left. We can see an object that's moving, but not faster than the speed of sound in the top right. In the bottom left, we see an object that's moving at the speed of sound. 
And in the bottom right, we see an object that's moving faster than the speed of sound. Um, who has any questions about anything we are talking about? Great. Thank you so much. I will see everyone mañana or Thursday. And uh, bye con Dios. Anybody want to ask me anything? I'm not trying to ignore anything. Yeah, Michaela, go. So, I don't really know how to put it, but say that you said that, um, like the sound travel, it goes through better on a in the salt, like a solid. It does, yes. Um, but what if, like, if I'm trying to listen to music and I put my phone, say, on my bed? or like on a surface or something, and then I go into the other room and I can't and I can't hear it as well as I heard it when I'm in here because of my wall. Is that is that but if I'm in like an open area and I go probably this I go the same difference, I could would I be able to hear it better than I was before? So that's a great, great point. Um you know I would I'm trying to think of how to explain this. You know, the sound waves, different frequencies of sound travel through solids differently too, okay? So again, just keep in mind that I'm not teaching you that much about any of this. Um, you know, low frequency sounds, like lows, they travel through solids better, which is why like when a car drives by and the sound's really loud, all you really hear or what you mostly hear is the low sounds, the bass sounds. So you hear like boom, 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 boom. And if you think the person in the car is listening to that, they're not. They're listening to something that has lots of high frequency sounds too, but those don't travel through the car that great. So, you know, again, like when your music's, if you have a good stereo, not an iPhone, like a stereo that's blasting in your room, you're hearing everything, you know, the, the high frequency sounds and the low frequency sounds. All your parents are hearing outside is boom, 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 boom. That's why they come up and they're like, turn that crap down, now! So there's a lot to that story. Um, you know, but yeah, so like if the sound waves hit the door and they travel better through the door, why does it sound lower on one side of the door than on the other? Um, I mean, it does, and I know why. I'm just trying to think of how to like best to explain it. it that's hard for me. Um, that's a great question, though, honey. You do so great thinking about the things that we're learning about and, and asking great questions. Um, I'll, let me think about it, okay, and get back to you on that. Is it because, as you said, low frequency waves travel better through a solid, but if you're in the room, you're hearing both, but if you're on the other side of the door, you're only hearing one? Yeah, you're hearing more of the low frequency tones outside the room, on the other side of the door, than the, the higher frequency waves are getting blocked by the door more. Uh, so that's um, why you don't hear it probably as loud. Uh, well, I mean, on the, on the other side of the door, all the frequencies sound lower. And again, if I told you that sound wave travel better through a solid, it doesn't really, you know, that doesn't really make sense with what I'm telling you, which is why you asked that question, which is, which is awesome. Um, so no, I don't think I'm not, no, I, I think your question is awesome. And uh, I don't have a great answer for you right now, other than I know that the low frequency sounds travel through the door better than the high frequency sounds. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. I, it's so great that I can't answer it that good. <laughs> Bye. All right, I'll see you later. Hey Moth, how are you? Hi, uh, sorry, I just wanted to listen to the music. I also wanted to write oh, down the name of it. No worries, no worries. It's called Master of Puppets by Metallica. Me and some of my friends actually are like starting a band and yesterday was like our first 
like official practice. That's so awesome. Um, what do you what do you play? Um, I do vocals, which is like slightly annoying because <laughs> it's basically just like screaming for like a couple hours straight. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, that's great. Who are your influences? You know, I'm not really sure. I just find it really fun to do. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Uh, I, I play little music too with my friends and uh, we have a great time doing it and uh, we're not that great. We never like played out in you know, bars or restaurants or whatever, but uh, we play in my basement and it's great. I mean, it's like my dad's in a band also with, with like a bunch of other neighborhood dads. And it's so it's like for the past couple of years, like every Sunday I'd hear them like playing and there's like, I went down into the basement and counted. They had a total of 16 amps, I think. And so it was like every weekend I'd just listen to them like screaming pretty much, not really screaming, but it's just like very loud. Cause you know, 16 amps and it's hard.